Okay, um, my name is Dr. Monique Schro. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here and uh, be here in Washington, even with the snow. Um, so I'm going to talk today, uh, sort of springboarding off of some of the um, issues that uh, Dr. Harrison brought up, looking at complications of surgical abortion. I'm going to try to tie in a few questions about abortion reporting and also consider some of the links between abortion and cancer and autoimmune disease. So we're going to review data on abortion incidents and complications, short and long-term complications, and to assess the relationship between abortion restrictions and abortion complications. Very interesting association. This is uh, CDC surveillance, which, as uh, Dr. Harrison alluded to, um, is incomplete. One of the reasons is that California, Delaware, New Hampshire, and Maryland do not report any abortion data whatsoever. So the estimated number of abortions through CDC data are 65 to 69 percent lower than Guttmacher's. Guttmacher uses a different methodology to assess for abortion uh, incidents. What they do is they actually contact abortion clinics and abortion providers. So it provides an additional dimension, um, and there there are a lot of questions about how complete their data are. Um, but one of the things that I want you to look at here as well is that if you look at uh, further, not at the numbers, because as you can see, this is way below the approximately 1.3 million abortions a year that we know occur in the United States. Um, but if you look at excluding the states, Alaska, California, Delaware, Louisiana, Maryland, New Hampshire, and West Virginia did not um, report numbers to CDC during different years and different periods of time. So this is a tremendous issue in terms of trying to ascertain what is the denominator. So when we're trying to look at pregnancy and abortion complications, we have the numerator, which is the number of abortion complications that occurred, but it's based on a denominator of all abortions, and that's a moving target that we don't have a good handle on. One of the things to look at here is that, as you can see, the vast majority of abortions are occurring at early gestational ages. The first column is less than eight weeks, nine to 13 weeks, 14 to 15 weeks. Why is that? Because as we all know, um, there is an approximate, well, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but the uh, incidence of complications rises dramatically with, with gestational age. And so you can see that um, the number of abortions in greater than 21 weeks um, is low in all states, except, except actually for Georgia, which had almost 1,000. This is 2009 data, which was the last time the CDC compiled their data. But Georgia had a very high number of <clears throat> late-term abortions, as did New York. So what are the complications of surgical abortion? Just looking for a moment about, at surgical abortion. Um, their short-term outcomes are mortality, morbidity. The morbidity includes infection, bleeding, uterine perforation with damage to the bowel or bladder. Uh, emboli, and what that refers to is blood clots or clots of fetal tissue that travel to the brain. Anesthesia complications for those procedures like second trimester and later abortion that require general anesthesia. And cardiac or cerebral, cerebral complications, usually occurring in women who have pre-existing cardiac disease that is not diagnosed prior to their procedure, and usually in older women. The long-term complications that we're aware of a preterm birth, there's a fairly clear, and we'll talk about that in a minute, fairly, fairly clear association, which has now been rigorously documented for preterm birth. Mental health issues, again, I'll defer to my colleague. Um, autoimmune disease and um, cancer, and I say possibly, and I'm going to ch tell you why it's possibly. Um, but autoimmune diseases include diseases like lupus and scleroderma, the, the incidence of which has been increasing dramatically ever since Roe v. Wade. Um, this is risk factors for legal-induced abortion-related mortality in the United States. This was a 2004 paper, which is what we most frequently cite when we're looking at the risks of abortion um, in the um, bi-gestational age. And again, I'm moving quickly here. But what you can see is that as the um, uh, gestational age, in other words, as the duration of pregnancy, 8 weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, increases, the um, risk for pregnancy, uh, risk for complications increases dramatically. Until if you get over 21 weeks and you're doing a preg uh, pregnancy termination, the relative risk for a complication is 76. That's an enormous risk. Okay, that's absolutely enormous. And um, in general, what the uh, out of this study came the data that say that for every increased week of just of gestational age there's a 38% increase in mortality. So that's where those data and that citation come from. This is looking at fetal, I'm sorry, at legal induced abortion mortality rates as a um, uh, function of gestational age. The blue line on the top is 1972 to 1979. As you can see, the mortality has decreased in part because um, different techniques have been um, advanced which have fewer complications than some of the older techniques that were used. But as you can see, the um, mortality rate, and again, this is mortality. This is not infection. This is a woman dying from a, a complication of um, abortion. 
increases um, fairly steeply after about 14 weeks, even in the most recent wave of data that these uh, researchers analyzed, which was uh, 1997. Okay, and then um, the causes of death, um, I'm sorry, the distribution of the causes of death, as I said earlier, hemorrhage, infection, embolism, anesthesia, complications, and then unknown. Um, these are some immediate complications after medical compared with surgical termination of pregnancy. And so one of the burning questions for OBGYNs has been, is medical termination of pregnancy safer than surgical termination of pregnancy? I'm not going to answer that. That's like a whole talk in and of itself. But um, this was an extremely well-designed study that looked at the question of what were the immediate complications of using either uh, mifepristone or mesoprostol or uh, surgical curatage. So if you look at this slide, the white bar is um, pregnancies that were 42 days or fewer. Now this study only looked at pregnancies with a gestational age of 63 days or less. The vast majority of these pregnancies were dated by ultrasound. And so as you can see, um, the complication rate is significantly higher for medical abortion than it is for surgical abortion. Um, and the uh, three um, complications that they looked at or that are apparent on this slide are hemorrhage. Hemorrhage was much higher with medical abortion, um, which makes sense. When you perform a surgical abortion, you usually have suction, you have um, instruments available, whereas medical abortion, the patient just goes home and can just bleed out. Um, in, in the area of infection, um, risks were a little bit higher with um, medical abortion, again, because there is a duration, and this duration of time is unknown, between when abortion is induced and when it actually occurs. And then for the um, risk of incomplete medical abortion, in other words, a woman takes uh, her abortifacient drug and then waits, expels part of the um, baby, but part is retained, usually the placenta, is much higher, again, with um, medical as opposed to surgical abortion. Um, as you can see, um, the risks, again, the risks of hemorrhage were higher with um, uh, medical abortion, infection rates were higher, risk of incomplete abortion, as I said earlier, as well. Now, what does this mean? Looking at all of those data, and again, I know I'm flying through this, but we'll have a Q&A after um, all of us have had a chance to present our talks. Abortion is clearly less safe at later gestational ages. It's, no one is going to argue with that. Um, the other issue to keep in mind, and especially from a policy perspective and working at the state level and the clinic level, is that the characteristics of women seeking abortion at later gestational ages are different from those of women seeking abortion at earlier gestational ages. Women seeking abortion at later gestational ages tend to be poorer, tend to be more likely to be involved in violent relationships, tend to be more likely to be ethnic minorities, and tend to be more likely teenagers. With the teenagers, that brings up the question as to whether these pregnancies, pregnancies are the result of statutory rape. Very often a kid will hide her pregnancy as long as she possibly can. And so one major target for trying to reduce the incidence of later abortions is to, thank you, is to try to um, focus on that particular aspect. Because decreasing late abortions is key to reducing abortion-related uh, mortality and morbidity. Now what are some of the long-term complications of abortion? Um, Bhattacharya in the 2012 study found that induced abortion in a first pregnancy increases the risk of preterm birth. A surgical as opposed to medical abortion increased the risk um, with a greater risk ratio and that makes sense. When you perform a surgical abortion, um, you dilate the, the cervix and there's mechanical damage to the cervix. If you look at their data, it shows that um, miscarriage uh, was slightly uh, was about equal to, um, whoops, whoops, wrong one. Um, miscarriage was slightly less likely to um, uh, cause um, pr subsequent preterm birth than um, abortion was. This is another study looking at birth outcomes after reduced abortion. This is an excellent study. Uh, the, one of the co-authors was Dr. Gisler, and this is based on registry-based data of, of first births in Finland. This is must have been a very difficult study, statistically speaking, to, to do. Um, most of these abortions were surgical, which is very interesting because I would think that in the Scandinavian countries there would be a preference for medical abortion, but that was not the case. And 97% were done for social reasons. The increased odds for very preterm birth were seen in all subgroups. If you had one abortion, you had about um, almost a 20% increased risk for preterm birth. Two abortions, one and a half times, and almost um, three times the risk, 2.73. 7, 8 after three abortions. If you had more than three abortions, in addition, you had an increased risk for preterm birth um, at less than 37 weeks and low birth weight. 
Now, I want to talk briefly about fetal microchimerism. This is a very geeky topic, but it's extremely fascinating. So what it is is that it's the presence of fetal cells in the maternal blood and tissue after pregnancy. For example, I have a 16-year-old son. If you were to biopsy some of my tissues, you would find some of his fetal cells in my tissues, okay? And this, um, yeah, it is kind of cool. It's kind of weird, but it's also kind of cool, okay? Um, and so, and fetal microchimerism, you can detect it in blood within the first 40 days post-pregnancy. Um, but within tissue, fetal cells tend to live for very, very long periods of time, 30 to 40 years. And the presence of fetal cells in maternal tissue is associated with autoimmune disease such as lupus and scleroderma and with cancer. This is, this is a very geeky slide, I'll admit it. But what this is looking at is the likelihood of fetal microchimerism, the likelihood that you would have fetal cells in your tissue post-abortion, post-miscarriage. And they found that if you had a surgical, mis uh, surgical abortion or a termination of pregnancy, you were much more likely to have fetal cells in your tissue and in your blood post-procedure. Now, as I mentioned, there's a very well-described associ association between fetal microchimerism and autoimmune diseases such as scleroderma. In addition, the incidence of autoimmune disease has increased dramatically since Roe v. Wade in women. Autoimmune disease is primarily a disease of women. It's increased dramatically since that time. Now, just want to talk briefly, because my time is about up, um, about the association between fetal microchimerism and cancer. The data are very conflicting. Fetal microchimeric cells appear to be possibly involved in both tumorigenesis, in other words, the stimulation of the formation of cancer, but also repair. And that may explain why there are these divergent results for breast cancer. It appears that in some women, having the fetal stem cells, because when you have a termination of pregnancy, those stem cells that come into the, into the woman's body from the fetus are very, very immature. They're extremely, they're pluripotent. There's some evidence that those cells are possibly more likely to cause tumorigenesis, to be carcinogenic, as opposed to the cells that you acquire when you have a baby, which may be involved in repair mechanisms, okay? And that may account for some of the decreased risk for cardiovascular disease and certain cancers that are seen in women who are a Paris, who've had a baby. Um, and then also may explain the heterogeneity in the, in the data about breast cancer and induced abortion. I want to talk extremely briefly about this. This is a study that looked at legal restrictions, the effect of legal restric restrictions on the incidence of complications of abortion. What this showed is that states with abortion funding restrictions had lower complications from abortions. States without abortion funding restrictions had higher complications. States that had mandatory delays, in other words, you had to have a 24-hour, 48-hour waiting period, also had lower abortion complication rates. And it shows that the odds ratio for the effects of these restrictions was 0.79, so you had a 25% reduction in the rate of complications um, for states that had more restrictive uh, legal <laughs> factors. Why is that? Because um, if states have more restrictive laws, you're less likely to do late abortions. If you reduce the number of late abortions, you're going to reduce the number of complications. So just to summarize, abortion reporting, as I said earlier, remains flawed. It's a major impediment to getting an accurate assessment of abortion complications. Surgical abortion is associated with both short and long-term complications, some of which are serious. And improved abortion reporting, appropriate informed consent, public information regarding abortion complications, and legal restrictions could help reduce abortion rates. Thank you.